All right, awesome. Leading coefficient test. One of my favorite subjects. Not really, actually. Um, with the leading coefficient test, I think it's one of the probably the easier things for people to remember once they get it and understand it. I think before that, it's probably one of the most difficult things that people can kind of wrap their head around. But I'm going to hopefully, and I won't speak too fast, try to show you a way that you can remember how to do this. So, uh, first thing I need you to remember is a couple functions. Y equals X squared. And the reason why I want you to remember y equals x squared is because the, um, the degree of this is 2. And if I was going to plot this graph, it looks something like that. Now, there's something really important about remembering what about just going on with graphs. We know we have an x and a y axis, right? That's our y, that's our x. And on our x and y axis, I'm only showing a couple points here, right? But these arrows represent that we're going far to places. Far, far to places. So, you know, if I was going to be counting this, I'd say like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and all the way off to infinity. So as we keep on going to the right, we're, gonna, we're going to infinity. And as we go to the left, we're going to negative infinity. Similarly, it works for the y axis. This is very important because what we're going to do is we're going to run, we're going to talk about power functions, which is y equals ax to the n, all right, where a and n are any real numbers. And one thing we're talking about right now is we're going to talk about when a is even. So I'm going to use x squared as an example, but guess what? It works for all square numbers. As long as this is my degree of my leading term, I can use this, I can use uh, my x squared model to remember, so if it's x to the 14th or x to the 6th, any leading num any degree that is even, and as long as it's the leading term of my polynomial, I can use this. So here's a couple rules you guys need to know. First of all, when it's even, okay, when we have an even power, um, and then when a, is greater than uh, zero. So that means a is greater than zero, so it's not a negative. As, as x, so that's my x. Remember, you, have, you guys have x and a, x and an f of x. Right? x values tell you left or right, f of x tell you up or down. So as x goes to the left, um, I'm sorry, as x, not goes to the left, but as x approaches infinity, so I'm going up here, I keep on going farther and farther left, what is my output value doing? Is it going up or is it going down? Well, it's going up to infinity. So as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to infinity. All right, and then as x approaches infinity, so as x goes this way towards infinity, again, my output value, or my um, f of x, goes to infinity. All right? Um, and you can notice that both of them, whenever it's even, they both go to infinity. That's when a is greater than 0. But when a is less than 0, that's going to look something, I'll cancel this back out. When a is less than 0, it actually goes downward, right? So now, as a is less than 0, I have as x approaches negative infinity. So now, as my x values go towards negative infinity, right? They're going towards negative infinity. My function is actually going, or my function values are going down to negative infinity. And as x approaches infinity, so now as I'm going on my graph towards infinity, my, my function values, output values, are going towards negative infinity. So the important thing to notice, <laughs> even if it's positive or negative, it's both of your functions, whenever it's even, they either both go to positive infinity or they both go to negative infinity. Very important. Uh, the next thing is let's look at an odd one. So I'm going to erase this because you guys have it on video and in your notes. 
So we can do that. So the next one is actually, you know what? I'm going to leave all that up there. That's perfect. Next one is an odd function. And I'm going to use y equals x cubed because it's the easiest odd function to remember. I don't know, you know, all the you know all these odds, what how exactly they're gonna look, and you don't need to. All you need to do is know, you know, if you need to visualize something, visualize what x cubed is. It's very easy to visualize. X, well, I was gonna write y, but this is infinity. That's infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity. So this is the same case, but now we're not talking about ah, even, we're talking about ah. So whenever your function, you're dealing with the function, it's like y x to the uh, 17th minus you know, 4x four, four cubed plus 3x squared. You know, since the leading term was odd, I can apply what I'm gonna do right now. So as long as your leading term, your degree is odd, um, you can apply these values. So now I'm looking, as x goes to negative infinity, so I'm going this way, my function, though, is now going to negative infinity. So it's the exact same. Oh, this is greater than 0. Did I mess that up again? No. Here we go. I messed this up. I messed what I was talking about. Let me explain this again. As x goes down, but it's going left to negative infinity, my function, which is f of x, that's actually going to negative infinity. So now this is going to be negative. And then as x goes to infinity, so as I'm going to infinity, my function goes to positive infinity, which is the same as your even. Then if, f, if a is less than 0, so let's kind of dot this one out, that's going to look something like this. So as x goes to negative infinity, my graph is going towards infinity. So it's opposite. And then as x goes towards infinity, my f of x goes down to negative infinity, which is exactly correct for there. So the main important thing when you're using these tests I like to visualize the most is my model of what an x squared looks like and what x cubed looks like. Because then, the only thing that's going to change it is if your a is is positive or negative, and that's just going to determine you know what it looks like. And then again, you can just visualize what are the reflections about the you know about the x-axis for those two problems. So that's a little overview for the leading coefficient test.